guys. I'm coming today to make this really quick video, and I know I say that a lot, but I really, um, I got myself in a time crunch on purpose because um, with all this Cheesecake Factory talk, and um, I had never been, so um, a girlfriend of mine who I have not seen in like a year, that's so crazy, um, but yeah, I invited her, I'm like, we've been trying to catch up get to go out somewhere again and do something and uh let's go to cheesecake factory so um anyway yeah that'll be it'll be my first time and uh, i'm really looking forward to that looking forward to seeing her but i wanted to come make this really quick video like i said uh it's been on my heart and mind i think it's needed i really don't think um i can make too many safety videos. I really don't. Uh, and this is another safety video. Um, I wanted to make it already anyway, but it's kind of, um, it's kind of based off of something that, um, I saw yesterday. So I was in this live on TikTok, um, and I already, he, the, the guy had already started the live when I came in. So I don't know how long um, it had already been on, but I kind of jumped into the meat of it in, in so many way, uh, words. Um, but basically, what was the, it was, he was talking about, um, oh shoot, I can't, um, it was two questions that he had on the board, something pertaining to women and something pertaining to men. Um, anyway, I'm gonna just keep on. I don't know if I, if I can re remember what it was about. Uh, I may have screenshotted it because sometimes um, I'll screenshot part of a live or whatever so that I can go back and maybe, um, subscribe to it or whatever. But anyway, uh, for the sake of time, um, the conversation changed to talking about um, men. Oh, here it is right here. So the question was, men who only value women's bodies are a danger to women. That was basically a statement. Um, and the other, other question or whatever that he had on his board was gold digging women are not a threat to men. So in essence, he was, the live was really about men, you know, being more focused on a woman's body and just wanting one thing from her or whatever is much more of a threat to a woman than a woman just being a gold digger to a man because you know as we know a lot of times men will inflate the you know her being a gold digger she don't want nothing from me but my money or just whatever um to that i mean they will really really inflate that and so at the end of the day you know what this guy was saying is that that may or may not be the case for some women if, if if it is the case, but even if that is the case, women are not like a threat to you if they're just trying to get money or if they even manipulate you or get to that point or whatever. Um, but if you ask me personally, men are so cautious and so careful with, you know, not spending money or spending too much or whatever, some of them until gold digging is not even really it's never really going to happen it was also interesting because he asked a lot of those men to come up any of you if you ever really feel like there has been a woman who really was a gold digger and just really strictly after your money and things like that and it, it was so crazy because there was one guy who came up there who all of them were like dude that's not gold digging like she didn't 
take like that wasn't gold digging. The one guy that did try to come up there and prove the point that yeah, they used me for my money or whatever. All of them were just like, Yeah, no, dude, you you had some other stuff going on in this that, that caused your issue. Um but it was so funny because so many of them, like they really had not. Like these men were really going on talking about rich guys and women using those men for their money and stuff like that. And and it was so funny because it, it was actually a question that I have asked a long time ago, like, why are y'all worried about some other guy's pockets? Like this, the men that y'all be worried about be millionaires and stuff. Like, why are y'all putting yourself in the category with millionaire and multi-millionaire men and the women that they choose and being offended that they're getting their money taken or whatever. The money that they probably, especially if they're still working or entertainer or basketball player, whatever, like they're going to make that money back. Like, believe me, they're, they're, the women are not stripping them dry. Like the men, most of these really, really rich men who wind up paying child support, alimony, all this kind of stuff, like they're not on the street begging. You know what I'm saying? Like the women are not stripping them dry. Um, actually, this is like a little bit of a detour, um, off of the subject, but actually I've read that women, even though women get the alimony and child support and all that kind of stuff, she still takes a huge life loss or life, um, lifestyle loss way more so than men do because men would be able to get up and just, you know, go back and just get that money. They say men actually recover from divorce and alimony and all that stuff about two to three years uh, after. And women, even though the women are getting the money or whatever, women's lifestyles actually go down. You know what I'm saying? So, but we're talking about violence. Um, I, this video Excuse me, guys. This video is really about men's violence and women's safety because, um, as I said, the focus in that live actually really began to change and, and shift and more of the focus was starting to be on men's violence and, and how men don't realize and see the fact that so many times they really are a threat, more so of a threat to women than women are to them. Uh, because men are bigger and stronger, because, you know, men's anger, the testosterone, the all of this, you know, that makes them very, very aggressive. And it turned to um, women really feeling unsafe. And it was, it was so funny because it, 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 it came to a discussion of men like literally totally not getting the fact that when you come up to women and be talking to women and being aggressive and not taking no for an answer and following her they showed like a lot of those following videos and you know where women are downtown and stuff and men are just literally following them for blocks you know um, cat calling and things like this and how it is scary. It is really scary to a woman. And many times women continue to say this and men blow it off. Don't get it. Or they really start feeling like, oh, well, you know, you know, you want it, you know, you like these kind of things and not realizing how that is threatening behavior and how, women really do feel frightened behind that. And I think it's really important to emphasize not just women, all women, even black women, because it, it's so crazy how I really think a lot of black men have really convinced themselves that black women are masculine, like men, and like, well, we already know they say we don't deserve protection, but they don't see us as women and gentle and dainty and afraid and 
can be hurt easily and things like that. Like black women can be hurt very easily, just like any other woman. You know what I'm saying? But they have put this masculine stuff and this aggressive stuff and black women allowed and black women. And it's just like, they've done that so much until they really almost have put black women on the level of them, of being men. And I think that's why it's so easy for those of them who are violent and who will hit a woman and all this kind of stuff to actually do that. I mean, because you literally have men today, like the men today in videos and so forth that I've seen, I've not experienced any of this, but I have literally seen where these men will literally punch and hit a woman with all of their might. Like they are punching them like another man or a dude. Matter of fact, more so than a man or dude, because you don't hardly see men fighting anymore. They'll beat the hell out of a woman, but it's, I, I, I don't hardly see men fighting. Like, I really don't. Um, so it's really, really crazy. But at the end of the day, um, some of them were just really not getting it. They were, you know, women were literally on there saying, yes, we do want you to leave us alone. We don't want you catcalling. When we tell you no once, we don't feel safe when we got to keep saying it three, four, five, six, seven. The more times we got to say it, the more we feel threatened. The fact that this this day and age, you have men who you can ignore them. You know, that's not safe. Uh, you can tell them no, as nice and gentle and whatever. That doesn't go over. And they don't want to hear anything but yes and giving their phone number or following you home or just it's and it's it's wild it's absolutely wild the degree of entitlement to women and women's body and women's spaces and women's uh comfort zone that men will just overpower a woman and take it like it's crazy you know and and they don't mind getting in her space when she's saying i'm uncomfortable because they will convince themselves that, like I just said, she wants it, she likes it, or whatever. Oh, you smiled at me Thursday. So, and it's just weird and it, it's so creepy and they don't get it. And so many of them will say stuff like a guy in the live, like they literally talked to this young man about it. I say young man because he, he was given 20 something energy to me. Like he seems like a really young guy. But. This guy just wasn't getting it. I mean, he was throwing out stats and such and such percent of men only do such and such. And it, it was just crazy because it was like he was not accepting the fact that women, some women, don't want him to come up and approach them and try to talk, and especially in certain settings, like walking down the street, like at work or whatever, or just places where they would feel uncomfortable. Now, the the thing about that, though, is that it is sometimes in a way a little hit or miss because different, I mean, di women are different. And that's another thing that is such a huge mistake with men because men continue to group us and these women and women such and such. And it's just like, it's so crazy because I may not like such and such. This woman may be totally fine with it, but because so many men won't look at us as individuals, we just get grouped. And so even if I do like such and such, I'll get some aggressive guy who's literally telling me no while I'm saying yes, because he has convinced himself that women like such and such. And they just cross the board all women. And it, it, it's it's sad. It, it actually is really, really sad because not only is it a problem for the men, it's a problem for women. You know what I'm saying? Um, even though that we understand and know now uh, that this Cheesecake Factory thing was a skit and fake, um, 
and I haven't done a video on that yet. Um, but we know that it was it was it was fake. It is fake. They they did different retakes of it and so forth. And but men are still, you know, I'm not going to talk about this list stuff because there's this whole. I, I may do a video on it, but honestly and truly, it's so silly until you know. But women made this list. This one particular woman actually made a list on places that she did not want to go on a first date. Now, that is just blown up all over the internet. Now they got other ones now where men made a comeback list on the different type of women not to date. And I really don't see nothing on there except for, I don't know, you know, it's literally, you're literally with that particular list, I'm saying, I'm seeing that you all want to date a man, a, a man. That, that's what I see because I don't see no women on it that wouldn't fit in that category, even though I understand that that was satire too. It's like no black women, all Western women. Like, okay, that is so crazy. but And I get it. it it's, it's, it's the approval point. But, you know, it's just, it's just a generalization. You know what I'm saying? That one particular woman made that video saying where she didn't want to go. We don't know nothing about the woman. We don't know the race of the woman. We just assuming that she was black. Uh, we don't know how young she was. You know what I'm saying? There, I made a video talking about that. The difference between women in their 20s and a woman in their 40s or 50s or what have you. And the difference in the mindset. Despite the fact that um, each woman is different and will want different things. So, uh, let me just continue. I'm hoping this cat don't try to jump up here on, on my computer. Um, but the safety, the safety issue. There, there were men on that live who were literally and seriously not getting it. They were just like, oh, well, uh, y'all gonna be cold and lonely and old with cats and all this kind of stuff. Another guy. Everybody told this dude, like, every kind of way that you could possibly tell him, and he just was not getting it. He His point was, well, yeah, you know, I know some men do that and harass women, and I know that, um, you know, some women may not like it, and I'm, there's just, that's a small percentage of men, and only one to two percent of men really harass women. It's not all men, and none of the men that I, you know, am, am in contact with does that kind of stuff, and what's so crazy about that is, sir, you, you don't have stats to say how many men harass women. Like, come on. Um, many of us, and I've said it on here in videos, I have been getting harassed since I have been a preteen, not even a teen, a preteen by full grown men and getting cussed out, called a hoe, called a bitch, called stuck up and all of this because I was literally terrified of, of these grown men trying to molest me, hurt me, rape me, I, like, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And they just don't get it. They just don't get it. And he was literally arguing a point that he could not prove. You know, and, and what's so funny about it is, you know, I even wrote in the comments, I said, so, I'm like, dude, like, you don't know what your friends are doing. You don't know what your other, he was in IT. And he was just like, yeah, well, my friend did. Yeah, we don't do that. And you know, that's not the way we care. I said, Dude, how do you know what your friend is doing at any other given time? Like, you can't speak for all the men in your company. You, I mean, so no guys in IT in America can't call women. Like, no guys in IT in America has ever harassed a woman. Like, come on, come on. And, and it's just really, it's just really crazy. Uh, but let me move on because I'm, I got to go jump in the shower and get ready. But... This whole thing of men not really for real seriously having the understanding of the fact that 
creepy behavior makes women afraid and feel unsafe. Um, I will try to link the video that I made about de-escalating violence because that is like pretty much the, the number one thing for women to try to always de-escalate a situation, always look at the potential. And I think, honestly, that's why a lot of women do get afraid is because we do look at the potential of someone being able to hurt us. You know what I'm saying? They're bigger, they're stronger, and they have the potential to hurt us way more than we can them physically. Uh, and that's usually the method uh, of, of men's violence against women is usually physical because they know that they're stronger and bigger than us. And I don't care how masculine you guys try to make black women, we're women and we don't have your strength. And, you know, that's why it's so important also for women to understand, realize, and and operate in the fact that you are dealing with someone who is potentially a huge threat to you and who can really do damage or take your life from you. So knowing those things to help you de-escalate violence is number one. Knowing and understanding the fact um, that you don't know if he will snap. You don't know if he really will hurt you. You know what I'm saying? So it's easy for some women to feel like, oh, well, he loved me. He would never such and such to me. I say don't ever think that. I really do. But not because, I mean, maybe he won't. You hope he won't. But never give that much credit that, he won't hurt you. You know what I'm saying? I don't care how much he loves you. I don't care how long y'all been together. I don't like, I'm just saying, hopefully he never would. But my point is don't convince yourself of that. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of women that get very, very mouthy. There's a lot of women who literally put their hands on men all with the idea in the back of their mind that he's not going to hit me. He's not going to hurt me. He, you know, I'm mad, I'm angry. I mean, but when he get mad and angry, his mad and angry and aggression can outperform yours, believe me, unless you have some type of weapon or something like that. Um, but anyway, keeping that in mind, um, you know, the other thing I wanted to bring out, um, there's a lot of people right now who are just not mentally well. Um, there's a lot of people right now, especially as we enter the holidays and things like that, who these people are really depressed. These people have lost. They've lost a lot. You know what I'm saying? And some people are really just at a point to where they don't really feel like there's a lot for them to lose. And, you know, I, I see a lot, even on um, different blogs and comments and posts and things like that, where, you know, women will say a lot, oh, well, you're going to go to prison. And if you do such and such, such and such, you're going to jail. Blah, 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 blah. I want to emphasize the point in, in the last few minutes for this video. I don't think women, some women understand the level of I don't careness that many men have about jail and prison. I really don't think they understand. So unaliving you and getting threefold, however many life sentences or whatever, so many of them. And, and I'm telling, I don't think, I wish we had a number. But I don't think women understand to the degree of how many of those men really will just say F it. And why? The fact that only 27 states in the 50 states that we have even have the death penalty anymore. Like that's, it's off the table for a lot of them. 
So that's not a huge threat. There, many of them are going to prison and so forth in a town that they know, with people that they know, with family members that they know. They got friends in there. The way that a lot of these prisons in America are set up are so cushy. They got cell phones in there. They got drugs in there. They got, like I say, friends and family in there. You know what I'm saying? They in there playing games. They're in there lifting weight, playing basketball, whatever. Like, they're not suffering, many of them. They are not suffering. So the fact of it being a threat that their freedom is taken is not really a threat. Like, for real, for real, it's not really a threat. And it's not a threat, despite all those things, you know what I'm saying? It's not a threat also because think about the fact of the number of them who really don't have anything to get up and wake up and live life for. Like, no job, no job skills, no prospects, like they're not, they don't have this big time career. They don't have, you know, uh, they're not looking for the American dream. Like they're literally just waking up day to day, um, literally just waking up day to day doing the same thing. And these are the ones who will unalive you and hurt you or whatever, and don't have no consequences. Like, Literally, there are some who don't mind going to prison for for many, many years because what's out here? You know, what I'm saying it's hard out here to live and survive and survive and operate in everything. When you are in prison, it's a very closed, very structured environment. You're told when to do, what to do, how to do, what time to do it. Like it's structure. And even though for the majority of us, that's not something that we want, for a lot of them, that's okay. Like, it, it really is structure. There was, um, in this movie, Life, there's two different scenes I want to talk about real quick. Um, and I, what's funny about it is I'm not really sure if one of the scenes is actually the movie Life, but I'm going to talk about it anyway. So do you remember in the movie Life where the the actor, I cannot remember his name, I see his face, and he's actually popular enough that most of us would know him, but he was the guy that, he was, he was gay. He was very gay. And honestly, he plays a lot of gay roles. Um, but he was getting ready to be released. And I think he was talking to Martin Lawrence. He got a letter and Martin Lawrence went over there and he was like, he was getting released. And he was just like, you know, he wasn't happy. And he was just like, dude, like, that's what all of us want is to get out. And basically he was just like, I can't go home like this. Like I'm gay gay. Like I ain't going to be able at all to hide this. And he was just like, I can't go home like this. Like I can't go to my mama like this. Like, and I think a lot of it, too, was just the fact, it wasn't just so much that, it was also just the fact of him getting out and having to face life and face in a world that he's not ready for. You know what I'm saying? I mean, some of them are in there so long that they don't have anything to come back and add to society or even even trying to get conformed again to society is just it's frightening and the other part that I want to talk about is the old man it was an old white guy and he had been in there like the 20s like forever and he was getting out and I I think at the end of that of, of his little story, I think he actually committed the S word. Uh, I think he hung himself. And I'm thinking that's the same movie. It was the old guy, old white guy. But that was really his thing. Like he just couldn't cope. Like it was a whole nother world. He couldn't cope. He didn't know what to do. He didn't know. I mean, you're in a world of technology now, even though life or whatever is, you know, was even set back in the day, but still, 
you know what I'm saying? And now you're released and you can get out and be free and do whatever you want to do and whatever. And he's an old man. Like, what's he going to do? And I'm saying all that because there's a lot of men who, when we look at the homeless population, when we look at the, the population of men who just have social anxiety, when we look at the fact of how many men are not thriving as good as women in society right now uh they're really lagging behind and so going to prison jail whatever for doing whatever kind of crime is not a total loss to them like it's not a dreadful thing for them to think like you know god forbid even putting myself in the situation in the mindset of that is terrifying to me but I couldn't imagine going there. I, I couldn't imagine going there for three months, like for real, for real, like honestly. But um, years and years and years, some of these men, whether you realize it, know it, or will admit it or not, these men don't have anything else to look forward to. So it's not a problem or an issue for them to go for multiple life terms or whatever. So, with all that said, because I got to get out of here, with all that said, keep yourself safe, ladies. Holidays are coming up. People are triggered. People are angry. People are, you know, having a hard time coping and dealing. A lot of people are living in the past. They've lost so much right now. People's nerves are, I mean, it's they're just easily triggered right now. And so... Um, and so they, um, it, it's easy. So keep yourself safe. Try to keep yourself out of altercations. You know what I'm saying? Road, I mean, just all of this stuff. It's so hard right now, but do the best that you can, uh, with keeping yourself safe and keeping yourself out of altercations like that. Um, I'm going to post that video that I made. Um, about de-escalating violence and everything, because I think it's so important to to reiterate. You guys listen to that, watch that, comment on it. Please let me know if you feel like I left anything out on there, if anything stands out to you on there. Um, but yeah, keep yourself safe, uh, ladies. And don't forget to, to get yourself some type of something where you uh, can be armed whether it's mace, whether it's a stun gun, whether it's a whole pew pew, whether, whatever it is. Um, learn fighting tactics. I talked about that in that, in that uh, video. Learn fighting tactics. Learn where to hit people. Learn the weak spots and everything and use them. You know what I'm saying? But the main thing is staying away from it, staying away from the violence, keeping yourself learning and knowing how to de-escalate that violence. But you guys, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Uh, please hit the subscribe button. Please hit all notifications so that you'll know when I upload new videos. Uh, leave me a comment. And until the next video, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. See you next time.